pack your bags and get ready for a road trip. We're going to travel down Ghost Avenue. And then we're going to head out to the state of New Hampshire to take a look at a bizarre UFO encounter that forces us to ask the question. If aliens arrive to change the balance of power on Earth, which side will you fight for? Today on Dead Rabbit Radio. Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Dead Rabbit Radio. I'm your host, Jace Carpenter. I took the second, I almost forgot my own name. I'm having a great day. I hope you guys are having a great day too. I hope you guys are having tons of fun out in the world being yourself. First off, let's go ahead and start the episode off by introducing one of our Christmas live stream contributors walking into Dead Rabbit Command right now. Give it up for Stink Bug Potato. Woohoo! Yeah, don't step on him. Don't step on him. He's a little, little stink bug. Walking into Dead Rabbit Command. Stink Bug Potato, you're going to be our captain, our pilot this episode. If you guys can't support the Patreon, that's fine too. Or the live stream, it's totally gravy. Just help spread the word about the show. That's another way you can really, really help out a lot. Now, Stink Bug Potato, I'm going to pick you up and I'm put you in my pocket. You don't get to drive anything. You're too tiny, you little stink bug. You get to put your hands on the steering wheel. We're going to take the Jason Jalopy out of Dead Rabbit Command. We're going to drive all the way out to California. <laughs> Little Jason Jalopy, little old-timey chitty-chitty bang-bang car, driving through the highways and byways of America. Specifically, we're headed out to Granada Hills. So, driving down street or highway, probably, right? Probably be a lot easier to get there instead of taking surface streets the whole way. We're on the freeway, actually. We are specifically on a freeway. We're on 118 freeway. We're headed eastbound. So, we are cars are driving by us we're actually pulled over to the side of the road because we got here a little bit early this is a spooky story it takes place at night but it's like three in the afternoon so we're eating some fast food in the back seat and the sun goes down i probably could have just started the story at night and then the moon comes up and it's all spooky time it's nighttime and now we're ready for the story to start so we're sitting in the car i'm like wake up wake up it's story starting and we see an unfortunate family in front of us. There's, it's a family of four. And you see a mom and a dad. And then two kids. And they're standing on the side of the freeway. And you can just see them kind of looking from side to side. And they're just like, oh, where, where are we, dad? What are we doing here? And the dad's like, I don't know. I know we should have taken a left there. But it's a freeway. It's just one long straight line. And the wife's like, honey, why didn't you ask the gas station attendant for directions? And he's like, for the last time. That guy was a hallucination, honey. You need to start taking your medication. We haven't been to a gas station for like eight hours. And we see this family like bickering and arguing out there. And they're, and they're just kind of like lost. But you being the friendly person you are, go to get out of the car. And you're like, maybe we should give him directions. I'm going to go over there. And I was like, no, 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 don't, don't go over there. Because have you noticed something? Haven't you noticed something with that family? You see that mom and that dad and those two kids, they look all sad and they're on the side of the road. I go, think about it, bro. Where is their car? And you're like, whoa, dude, I did not even think of that. Now, this is a real ghost story. It's been reported on 118 Freeway Eastbound. It's exactly that. You see this family on the side of the road, and it looks like they're having car trouble. They're just kind of gathered around, and it looks like they're waiting for someone to stop and help them. But there's no vehicle there. And if you see them and you pull over, if you're a friendly person, unlike me who just sat back and watched that little little show, if you pull over to help them, they disappear. And it's interesting because... When you are driving, I could totally see this being a real event in the sense that when you're driving down the freeway, you're going pretty fast, right? And you would see the people on the side of the road and you'd be like, oh, I need to help that family. And by the time you you pass them, obviously, and now you're already going past them and you're like, oh, I better go help them. So you might double back, right? You might get on an off ramp and come back there. They wouldn't be there. And you might even rationally be able to think, maybe they got help. Maybe by the time I got there. Some other dude, some other serial killer picked him up. You're like, oh man, those are supposed to be my four victims. It takes a second to process it, right? Even if you saw him farther off and he started to slow down and pull in front of them, even if you don't give him a rational time to leave, right? If you figured they, you wouldn't immediately think it was a ghost if you got on an off ramp and came back around and then got back on, 
eastbound lane. You wouldn't you wouldn't really think ghosts, but people who've pulled off right away when they see them, they're they still just vanish in front of them. So I read that story and I wanted to combine it with this other story, and then we'll kind of take a look at this phenomenon altogether. I have a theory about this. So that's in Granada Hills, California. Stink Buck Potato, drive us on out to Arizona. We're headed to Aho. Arizona, a place specifically known as Crater Range. Stink Bug Potato, take this Jason Jalopy out to Crater Range. That's a place in Arizona near Ajo or Ajo. One of the two. <laughs> I'm sure a local person will email me and let me know that neither is correct. In the 1950s, so this is an interesting story. In the 1950s, back in Ajo, these couple just got married. So it's like, ding dong, ding dong, ding dong. They're running out of the church and people are throwing rice at them and stuff like that. And they're like, all right, we don't have to buy dinner. We're just going to have rice. They're like catching it in bags. They're like, thanks, family. They're going to eat all this rice. And they are driving from Aho all the way out to Lake Tahoe. They're like, let's go to a place that rhymes with the city we got married in. And that's where their honeymoon's going to be at. So they're driving in their own car out to Lake Tahoe but they never reach there. The hotel in Lake Tahoe is like, oh, where's the wedding? Where's the wedding suite people? <laughs> where's where's the new married people? We have this wedding suite. I <laughs> also have a big old pervert, and I've installed peepholes in their room. I'm waiting for them to show up as well. Where are they? <laughs> as he's like getting all sweaty, and they're like, hey, uh, hotel manager, yeah, they haven't arrived yet. And everyone's like, oh no, hmm, well, you know. Missing people. <laughs> missing I guess people go missing sometimes. Someone should call the police. And what happens is this couple never reached their destination. Ever. Because what had happened was as they were driving through Crater Range on both sides of the road, there are these hills with huge rocks on each side of the hill. Basically, remember Dragon's Lair where those big balls rolled back and forth and you had to run in between them it was that <laughs> it was that it was that cartoon video game but 1950s america they why would you just put a fence up or roll the boulder i would have said no traffic for the next two days <laughs> our construction workers are going to be pushing boulders around and just have them roll down like controlled rollolition you know just get the boulders out of the way first <laughs> you're like jason i'm glad you think everyone's the hulk and that's even feasible well the Hulk could have saved them because as they were driving through Crater Range, one of these big boulders had rolled down into the road to see if I had, I would have pre-rolled the rocks and then we could have like smashed them with hammers and stuff like that. I guess you could have done that on the top of the hill, but it's less fun. I want to roll them. Wee! They didn't do what I said and a rock rolled down and their car crashed. It was their wedding night, bro. Their car crashed into this rock, and they both died. So they did not get to consummate their marriage, and <laughs> the poor perverted hotel manager had to spend the night alone. And it is said that to this day, if you are driving through Crater Range after midnight, there's a chance that you may see this young couple standing off on the side of the road trying to flag down help. But the same thing, when you pull over, they're gone. So you're driving through this obstacle course of falling boulders, and then you're like, God, well, that was close. I only lost three of my four passengers. And then you see this young couple, hey, help us, help us, oh no. And then you pull over, and they're gone. And so I looked at those two stories. They're both creepy, right? Driving around late at night, ghosts. They're, it's, they're, those are both creepy stories. And discounting stuff like the Phantom Hitchhiker story, which is pretty common. I think everyone's aware of what the Phantom Hitchhiker is. But I'm actually surprised. This is why I picked these two stories. I'm actually surprised there's not more ghosts on the side of the road. Considering the amount of people who die in car accidents. We really don't know what causes the ghost phenomenon. Everyone has a theory, and most people actually believe two or three theories. Like, for the most part, though, these are this any one of these theories could cause a haunting. One, a tragic death, right, is a very common thing. You have this house where this young woman 
She lost her baby. She's like, I don't know. I don't know where to put down my baby. My baby's somewhere in this room. And she can't find her baby. And she kills herself. We see that a lot. Women falling down the stairs often leads to ghosts. Suicides very often become ghostly activity. So one, it's a tragic death. Two, it is unfinished business type of ghost, right? Those ones are a little more rare. Buried treasures, wills not followed. So the dudes like rattling chains and stuff like that. That one's not as common as the tragic death. And then the third one is actually kind of an offshoot of the tragic death, but it doesn't necessarily, no one has to die for this type of ghost. So it's kind of weird. It's a basically a recording of an emotional event. So somebody getting in a huge fight, this this marriage, these two people having a huge fight, and they're soaking the house of that energy. And then you move in like three or four years later. They are both alive. They leave, but they left all this negative energy. And you'll be sitting there and you'll it'll sound like someone slammed their hand into the wall. So it's not a ghost trying to communicate with you. It's a replay of the events. Those are kind of the three big baseline hauntings. And then you get into stuff like demons, which is something totally different. Those things are lucid and they're intelligent. Like usually like the ghost who died of the tragic death, they can't really change their situation. It's just kind of replaying that event. The ghost that is a recording where it's the same thing happening over and over again, but it's not necessarily anyone dying. Footsteps down the stairs. Footsteps down the stairs or people walking in your ceilings. Those aren't necessarily intelligent ghosts, right? That could be a recording of something. <laughs> They're like, honey, you've been so bad tonight. You got to go sleep in the attic. It's not, this, not the spooky attic. He's stomping. He's stomping through the attic all night long so his wife can't sleep. Those are kind of the three baseline definitions of a ghost, right? And then you have demons, which is something completely different. But think about where we spend a lot of our time on the roads, where we're constantly in a heightened emotional state, either super happy because we are listening to music that we really love, or we're in a car with someone we really love and we're enjoying the sunlight as we're driving through Arizona, or if I told you once and told you twice, kids, do not ask me, are we there yet? Did you hear that? Hold on. Hey, this is Jason from the future. I'm editing this episode now. I don't have my mic with me. I'm, I'm on vacation. That sound that I heard, and I'll boost the audio so you can hear it as well. That was the sound of my bathroom garbage can lid falling off and you go well I <laughs> just edit it out just edit it out um i it's just, i listen i don't know what could have caused it could have actually made it do that um i never use that garbage can <laughs> never ever put stuff in there i it takes like a year to fill up because i never put stuff in there and i never i never take the garbage out either the lid has not never fallen off like that before or popped off like that before so does it mean anything i don't know um, it's not helpful that I'm talking about the causes of ghosts. I recently found a lizard in my house, so maybe it was the lizard who did it, but he's a, he's a little dude, so I don't think he could flip off a garbage can lid. And the, and I, the, a garbage can lid didn't, didn't fall off. Like, I mean, it did, but it wasn't gravity. I think something might have knocked it off. But was it a ghost? Was it a, was it a lizard? <laughs> Jason, why do you have a lizard in your apartment? Is it a pet? No, he just... Wandered in one day. I named him Alexander, and he's been running around ever since. But anyway, so I, I wanted to go ahead and let you guys hear that. Um, so I hope you guys enjoyed the sound of a garbage can lid flying off in a bathroom. You can't see. Let's get back to the episode. The lid just came off my garbage can in the bathroom. I don't know how much of the mic, how much of that was picked up by the mic. <sighs> anyway, it's weird. Okay, anyway, it's probably normal, right? <laughs> <laughs> everyone's lid flies off their garbage can every once in a while but emotion heightened emotional states right driving down the road and that's just the emotions then you have car accidents a lot of car accidents a lot of people dying in car accidents and then their loved ones on the side of the road like grieving their loss <laughs> they're like jason come on man these episodes get dark sometimes that came out of nowhere 
all it just soaking into the side of the road. You have that type of stuff. I'm actually surprised there's not more hauntings, which adds another little twist to the haunting thing. A lot of people believe, and I'm a proponent of this, is that you have to have generally one of, you have to have a spark, whether that's a emotional recording or violent death or unfinished business, and a location that's suitable. So it could be, like if someone died in a Macy's, so not necessarily means that there's going to be a ghost floating around Macy's, right? People die everywhere, everywhere. And so the idea is that there, there has to be like more than one factor. Otherwise, there would be ghosts everywhere. So I don't know, like, is are these ghosts here because there's something, there's some different type of energy in these locations that makes the ghosts get trapped here, or makes this event play over and over again, as opposed to, if they died a couple miles down the road, you would have no idea this happened. Or, that's one theory, right? And if that's the case, we should have maps. <laughs> we should have maps that say, don't die here. You may be a ghost. But then the other idea is, what if when you're driving down the road, it's just littered with the dead? That's terrifying. Like, you're just driving down the road and you just all these people are just staring at you. And you can't see them. They're just watching you. Yeah. scores of them, hundreds of them, thousands of them, people who died in buggy accidents, people who died yesterday in a car accident, right? You're driving on the road and they're just like, uh, I don't know. <laughs> as terrifying as it is, I don't think that, I think the truth is somewhere in the middle. I think there's a reason why there's not a million billion ghosts, right? And there's somewhere, basically I'm saying somewhere between one ghost and a billion ghosts. Why are certain places haunted? Are there a ton of ghosts on the side of the road? Is it? What if like every one out of a hundred cars you saw broken down on the side of the road was a ghost? Now you don't feel so bad. <laughs> now you don't feel so bad about not pulling over and helping them people out. But a scary story. And again, it makes you think like, why are these particular locations haunted? They're not the only people who ever died in car accidents. They're not the only people who died in car accidents on their honeymoon, right? Like, this stuff happens. There's tragic stories all the time. So why these people? Why these locations? Is there an answer for that? Or are there, are there millions of ghosts? But we can only see some of them. But they can always see us. Spooky, spooky stories. Stink bug potato, let's go ahead and toss you the keys to the carpenter copter. We are leaving behind Arizona. We're going to push over a couple boulders and just get it over with. We're headed all the way out to New Hampshire. <laughs> We're in the town of Hampton, New Hampshire. The date, September 30th, 1982. Ah, everybody run, go home. No, lock the door. Look out the window, Nancy. Do you see anything out there? I still see it, Johnny. I still see it. A massive UFO appeared over the town of Hampton, New Hampshire. Apparently, multiple witnesses saw this massive UFO flying overhead. And Hampton is nearby Peace Air Force Base. P-E-A-S-E. Peace Air Force Base. And you imagine they were also like, get, get the fighters scrambled. Dur, 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 dur. And they're climbing up the ladders and stuff like that. And the guy's like motioning with the glow sticks. And they're just like, go, go. <laughs> it doesn't say any of that in the story. There are no fighter jets launched. There are no fighter jets launched. But come on, you got to give me a little bit of joy, right? We're shooting it down. <laughs> no. <laughs> Roger 2. Roger 2 is down. <laughs> None of that happened. Instead, <laughs> instead of that action impact event, this UFO is flying over the area. Multiple witnesses saw this thing, and then it descended over by a swamp and went out of view. And reportedly also, it dropped off a radar at that point. But while it was out of view, these two young women were running from it, but they end up running towards it, apparently. Apparently, they're not really good at directions. They end up directly underneath this massive UFO. And in Oval beam of light descends from it. And the two women are like frozen in the light. 
One of the women, she's just frozen. She doesn't get any sort of special communication. But the other woman, we don't have their name. This story's interesting. There's some interesting behind-the-scenes stuff on this. But these two women are frozen underneath the UFO. And one of the women, we don't have either of these young women's names, but one of the women receives a telepathic message. Now, I'll reveal what that telepathic message is in a second, but I want to do some quick things a little more about the story. I got this story from thinkaboutitdocs.com. They got it from a guy named John Paul Oswald. He wrote about it in a magazine or, or some sort of publication called UFO and Paranormal Perceptions, Winter Edition, 1994. Now, John Paul Oswald's a pretty big name in, U- in UFOlogy. He used to work for the National Investigations Committee on Aerial Phenomenon. It was a, it sounds very governmental, but I believe it was a private group. And what's interesting, when you look at this story, it starts off by saying a very important multiple witnesses nocturnal close encounter occurred in the city located near Peace Air Force Base. I could find no record of this report. I could find no record of a multiple witness large UFO In the year of 1982, New Hampshire actually has some huge UFO stories. They had the Exeter sightings, which happened in the 60s. It was one of the, it was a massive, mass witness UFO event. But that happened like 20 years previously. But they're saying that this one, this particular incident, I could find no other reference to this. And it's interesting just to note that the Betty and Barney Hill abduction, which was the very first publicly talked about story of alien abduction also took place in New Hampshire. So they do have some big events in UFOlogy, but this story itself, I couldn't find anywhere else. But again, think about it. Docs.com has never steered us wrong before. John Paul Oswald's a big name in UFOlogy, and we do have a lot of events coming out of New Hampshire. The weird, right? It's weird that I couldn't find any other reference to this story. So I wanted to clear that up, but let's go back. I want to talk to you about this telepathic message, because I think this is a really cool thought experiment. The tele- I, I want you to think of I want you to think about this. The telepathic message that the aliens gave to this young woman was, "Listen. There are evil humans on your planet right now trying to take over. And we want to stop them." That's why we're here. We're here to fight against the evil human power structure that is controlling your planet. So let's, this is, it's interesting because that's a very, very simple phrase. And I know there's going to be some pushback and I know there's going to be some automatic. This is my thing. If you knew that this wasn't Project Bluebeam, this wasn't, these aliens were being legit. They weren't hallucinations. They weren't holograms. It, I don't want you to think, well, what if the bad guys are controlling them? Take all of that off the table. Take all of that off the table. You are seeing in front of you an alien, someone from another planet. And that alien, who you know is real and is sincere, there is no duplicity here. It's not actually a demon. This isn't a double cross. If an alien came to you and said, me and my race, we have traveled all the way here to take evil people off of your planet. And, so right there, that's the initial statement, and they are being completely sincere. No fingers crossed, they don't have another agenda. And, their definition of evil people is your definition of evil people, in this scenario. Whatever person, whatever group you see as the main threat of society. An alien came down and there is no hidden agenda. They are being completely sincere with you. Alien come down, says we are here to rid the planet of evil people. They are people who you believe are evil. Would you help them? Now, again, I know I'm going to get comments saying, well, no, it's Project Blue Beam. They're really demons. They're here tricking. All of that's off the table. You know, for a matter of a fact, these guys are being completely sincere. But they're asking you to fight against your own species. You have The only thing you have different with your enemies is the way you view the world, the way you think the world needs to be better. 
political beliefs, religious beliefs, but it's your same species. This is a really interesting question. Taking all duplicity off the board. You know for a fact, and I got to keep hitting that home because I know I'm going to get those comments. If an alien says, will you help us fight this group, this group of humans who you believe are evil and we believe are evil, will you help us destroy them? I find that question super fascinating because I don't know what my answer would be. Like I've been thinking about that because I may know that there are groups on planet earth, right? That have done untold damage to people. And it doesn't even have to be like a worldwide group, like in the Illuminati. Imagine if an alien goes, listen, all of these dictatorships around the world we're working against those too. We could, we could free a billion people overnight and also provide them with food and medicine. All these countries that are starving, all these people that are oppressed, we could end it. But we need your help, Jason. We're going to destroy these evil world leaders and we need your help. Would I do it? Because see, at the end of the day, they're aliens. And again, see, your first instinct would be like, this is a trick. I watched the, I watched, I watched all of these sci-fi horror movies. Great. I love V, but I watch all these things. They're tricking me. Or this is Project Blue Beam. Or at the ending, they're like, ha ha ha, no, you were our enemy all along. Or, and then they came for me type of scenario. Like the aliens are playing humans off. So we all destroy each other. I'm not, no duplicity. I know for a fact, I'm sitting here with this alien and I know for a fact, he's telling me the truth. He can actually save billions of people, lift them out of abject poverty, remove all oppression on them. No trick. No, the cure is worse than the disease. Nothing. Would I help him? I don't know. An alien, it's not human. At the end of the day, it's not from this earth. And I always talk about this too. I, you got to make it clear to me, a human and a dog and an earthworm and a blade of grass, we're still all earthlings, right? We evolved here. We recognize each other on some sort of basic level. We're all from the same set of genetic material, not an alien, right? So it's such an outsider coming in. That's what gets humans in the problem in the first place, right? Now that I said that out loud, that's what gets us in the worst place anyways, the outsider, right? If every human being on the planet was the same skin color and the same religion and everything was the same about them, we would still find something that was different and hate them for that. That's just the way of the world. We see that in every culture all over the world, right? We have a ton of differences, but even if we had none, we would make them. I personally do not know what I would do if an alien gave me that task. Again, the very first thing I would do, and I think everyone would do, is be very suspicious of them and not trust them. But again, so that would just be everyone's answer. Well, I wouldn't trust them. I wouldn't know to trust them. So removing that from the table, if you did try, you knew for a fact through whatever way they had already started doing this, or you would, you just know, you just know, I can't really, <laughs> I can't think of a, of a plot device that removes all doubt, but. They have their remove all doubt to Nader. Obviously, they would think that they were being crooked to you. You just know for a fact. You trust them instinctively. Would you, would you take the side of aliens against the people you hate? Right? You hate the elite, that, that whole mechanism that's ruling the world, and they say we can destroy the Illuminati like that. But we need your help. We need these human agents around to do this, and you look at the scorecard and you go, all the human suffering the Illuminati has caused, and you know, I have to keep hammering this home, you guys are probably tired of hearing it, but you know the aliens are being legit. Would you go, would you fight against, this is really what it comes down to, would you fight against fellow humans and destroy them, kill them, right? Would you kill fellow humans in league with an alien race if you knew for a fact that they were on your side and that things are going to work out well if you guys won? And I don't know what I would do. As bad as the humans are on Earth, you know what I mean? They're human. 
it's just an interesting thought experiment. When I, when I ran across that, I go, that is really, I, I never had really, th- I mean, obviously, listen, I've thought about that before in a fantasy type scenario, like me and the boys, me and the boys, like overthrowing the government or whatever. So if, yeah, you did not hear that part, but uh, you know, the government's super corrupt and we're like, yeah, we got to have like red dawn type scenario, obviously. But yeah, I mean, like, obviously, you, you know, you're not going to be able to do it. It's a fool's errand to think that really a small group of people can initiate a ton of change unless you have a massive amount of resources, right? And when I say small group of people, I'm like talking like 10 or 12. I'm talking about like the Wolverines in Red Dawn, not, you know, what is it, 3% to 5% of the population can change, can actually, that's what causes revolutions and civil wars and things like that. But um, for like global change, these aliens have the technology and like they go, you can make the world, you can help us make the world a better place. But we need your assistance. Ba- the way I would see it is it betraying my own species. So I, I don't know. I'm actually curious to see what you guys think. To see how you guys... I'm not fishing for comments either. I'm not like, comment in the video. <laughs> Let me know. Just to think about it. Like, would you betray... That's what it comes down to, right? Even though I have nothing in common with the families that rule the world, the Illuminati. Even though I have nothing in common with them. And we may have very, very different ideas of what we consider to be a just and peaceful world. At the end of the day, they're still human. I know some people will disagree with that, the reptilians and all this stuff. But assuming, again, that they're actually biological human. I mean, they were born. They experienced sunshine on their skin. They were on their swings and fell in love, scraped their knees. And all this stuff that every human goes through. And the aliens devoid of all that stuff. They can change it. They can actually change it. And they can rid the world of these evil power structures. But they need you to turn against your own species. Would you do it? I don't know the answer myself. I, I just, I don't. But there may come a day where the alien ship is hovering over me. And they ask. They ask, will you help us fight those evil humans? And I can only hope by then. I not only have an answer, but I have the right answer. DeadRabbitRadio at gmail.com is going to be our email address. You can also hit us up at facebook.com slash DeadRabbitRadio. TikTok is at DeadRabbitRadio. Dead Rabbit Radio is the daily paranormal conspiracy and true crime podcast. You don't have to listen to it every day, but I'm glad you listened to it today. Have a great one, guys.